shout Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church, and welcome to the first service of the new year. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that God was so mindful of you and me that we made it here today. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. If we have any visitors, we get excited about our God. Like the song says, if you knew what we've been through, hallelujah, you would be shouting too. Hallelujah. Why don't you take just a few moments to go greet one another in Jesus' name and tell them, welcome to Life Church.
word of a body. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord on this wonderful Sunday? Come on, has God been good to anybody today? It's the first Sunday of 2024. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. You know, we're going to have a good service here today. This would be a good service for somebody to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues, wouldn't it? This would be a great service for somebody to be baptized in the name of Jesus today. Somebody can be healed in this service. Somebody can be delivered in this service. Somebody can be set free in this service. There is no telling what God can do. Come on, put your hands together all over this building. Hallelujah. Can you feel the faith moving out there that I feel up on this platform? Woo! Mm, look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. Yes. We want to take a few moments here and do what I love doing. I love passing out these certificates. Oh, all the baptisms and Holy Ghost certificates, they make me so excited. I'm just so excited to know what God's doing. I'd hate to go to a church where nobody was ever baptized. I'd hate to attend a church where you go six months, a year before anybody ever gets the Holy Ghost. I believe it's the will of God every service for somebody to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. And the day's coming for Life Church where it's not just every service, it's every day. It's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, plus Sunday and Wednesday. Come on, God's got a revival for this church. This building isn't big enough for it, no. I said this building isn't big enough for it. There's not enough chairs for it. Woo. So when we call out these names, I just want you to celebrate because these are people that the Lord's pulling and drawing on, and these are your friends, your family, your coworkers, and these also represent other people that are coming. I love it. And this one really excited me. Little Kyler was baptized in the name of Jesus. Come on down, Kyler. His mother, Kaylee, come on down. It's been a while. Kaylee, come on down. She, too, was baptized. And also Michael Moody baptized in the name of Jesus. Come on, isn't this exciting? There is no telling what the Lord's going to do in a church. I said there's no telling what the Lord is going to do in the house of the Lord. Come on, you ought to clap your hands and celebrate. Sin washed away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, it's going to be your family next. It's going to be your friends next. It's going to be your neighbor next. I'm prophesying to some of you in 2024. People you've been praying for for a long time are just going to suddenly show up. People you've been praying for and begging God for are just going to show up. Just going to appear. They're going to come to you. Some of the folks that you were, that acted irritated with you when you said, are you coming to church or they acted mad? Those are going to be the folks that say, going to text you on Sunday morning, hey, what time's church start? What time's church start today? Who's preaching? Is pastor preaching? I'm going to hear him preach down there today. Amen. Somebody say, I believe it. It's going to happen here today. Amen. If you're visiting here with us, we're so glad to have all of our guests here. Would you give them a great big hand? Thank you for coming out and worshiping with us on this wonderful Sunday. And if you uh, did not receive a card, just lift up your hand. We would love for you to have one of these Connect cards. This will help you if you will connect with us. We'll be able to better minister to you if you've got any prayer needs or if you want a Bible study, a personal Bible study, or you want to join some group or just want to connect to our church, be sure to fill that out, and we will get to know you much better. And we're very, very excited that you're here, and we don't want it to be your only time that you're here. We want you to join the family. 
This is God's family, and we are glad that you are home. God bless you. Praise the Lord, church. All right, all you married people, listen up. All right, whether you're a regular comer, whether you're a visitor, please join us for our married conference coming up on uh, February 9th and 10th. Thank you very much. And so it's going to be an exciting time, um, and my wife has some more to say about the speakers. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. So Dr. Wilson and his wife, Sister Tina Wilson, are our speakers. Dr. Wilson is a licensed professional counselor, okay? So pastor has brought us the best, amen? Amen. And he and his wife operate a behavioral health center up in Colton, California. They are both dynamic speakers, so you don't want to miss this opportunity to invest in your marriage, amen? Hallelujah. It will be $50 per couple. Child care will be, will be provided. Refreshments will be provided. So you don't want to miss this opportunity. Also... Again, Friday night and Saturday morning. We'll send out a link or post a link pretty soon for you to register. If you want to register now, you can. Go ahead and pay your $50 today. We'll take it. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, again, this is an opportunity for you to invest in your marriage. So we want to see you guys there. How many are going to be there? Just wave your hands. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. And why don't you turn your attention to the screen for a brief video announcement. Praise the Lord, everyone, and Happy New Year. We want to welcome you to the first Sunday of 2024 here at Life Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today. Here's our upcoming announcements this week, so make sure you listen up closely. Family prayer has been amazing around here on Monday nights from 6.30 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. Start your year off right in prayer. So come on by and experience the power of collective prayer. We hope to see you there. Also on Monday nights, we have our Exploring God's Word Bible Study here at 6 p.m. in the Rebecca Williams Building. If you are interested in attending, please see our pastoral staff today to sign up. Midweek Matters. Come be a part of Midweek Connect here at Live Church this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Connect to God, His Word, and the Church. We hope to see you this Wednesday at 7 p.m. For all of our rooted youth, this Friday we're going to be having youth service right here in the sanctuary. We can't wait for this awesome time to be with the best youth group in San Diego. Remember, this Friday at 7 p.m., youth service for rooted youth. Join us every Sunday at 11 a.m. for our family worship service. We pray that you, you and your family are blessed during this time of worship. And during service, we have our interactive Life Kids Church in the building next door. During offering, all children ages 4 to 10 will be dismissed, so make sure you look out for the minions and follow them to the back. Everyone say revival! That's right, we're having revival here on January 28th through the 29th with evangelist Charles Robinette. This is going to be a Sunday morning and a Monday evening service that you just don't want to miss out on. Start inviting your friends, co-workers, and families, neighbors to be a part of these amazing services. Brother Robinette is used mightily of God, so let's be sure to pack the house out for all of those services. We hope to see you there. All right, Live Church, be sure to connect with us online via Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube to stay up to date on all of our upcoming events. Make sure to check in, like, and share our posts. And comment too. That's all the announcements that we have for this week. So let's get back to our service. God bless and Happy New Year. Praise the Lord, Life Church. 
One last uh, announcement I'd like to make is this weekend there is a Bible quizzing tournament taking place in the district or in the section. Um, if any parents are interested in attending that event or sending your kids to um, see that event, uh, Brother Aaron is going to be heading that up. So please see him after service for details and information on that uh, for this coming weekend. Uh, it's offering time at Life Church. Let's stand and give God some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's take a look at our offering goal for the month of January for the new year. 4%. Give God praise for that. Amen. We are at the beginning, as Pastor mentioned, first Sunday in January. So thank you for those that have already given of your offering uh, to what's taking place here at Life Church. Uh, we are so grateful for the investment and also for what God is doing as we just saw a couple of those that were baptized. It's always amazing to see new faces, new families, and new people being born into the kingdom of Life Church. Let's take a look at our offering scripture for today. It comes from the book of Luke, chapter 6, and the Bible says in verse 38, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. Amen. That is a powerful principle that God has established in his kingdom of giving. An open hand, an open heart, an open spirit. And it's amazing every time I open myself and I give to the Lord, I give into the kingdom, just the blessings, uh, the peace, um, and all that comes back when I have my hand open because I've given that I'm able to then receive. Amen. Amen. There are five ways you can give today, as you see up on the screen, so feel free uh, at that time to give however you please. Uh, at this time, uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessing, God. We thank you for the income, God, that we've received, the doors that you've opened through jobs, God, those in careers and positions. God, we thank you for the promotions that have taken place in 2023 and the promotions to come in 2024. God, we thank you for all that you're going to do and that you're doing currently. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can bring your tithe and offering. And at this time, the minion is in the back, Brother Minion. If you have a children, uh, child, excuse me, you can send them to Kids Church and they will line up at the back door. God bless you. There's no hurt that can outlive the grace freely given to the raging blood that covers us. For the thoughts that come to decay, you send love to strip them away and you've left the truth.
thankful. We are truly free, free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands all over the house. Come on, lift your hands and lift your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's go to the book of 2 Kings chapter, and we're going to begin reading verse number one. I'm going to need a lot more monitor up here. Second Kings, the fifth chapter, verse number one. Boy, I love to hear the sound of Bibles, pages flopping. love it. I know some folks have it on their phones. I do too. But oh man, that's a wonderful sound, isn't it? Second Kings, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse number one. And we're going to read a, a kind of a lengthy passage. I'm going to cut some of it out for all of you who have ADD. And then maybe you'll catch it when I preach it or 2 Kings 5 and verse number 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord, everyone say the Lord, had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captain out of the land of Israel, a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus saith the maid that is of the land of Israel, king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. Somebody say, that's a lot of money. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Let's skip to verse number 9. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, someone say angry, and went away and said, Behold, I thought, I want to preach about it a little bit, but man, we can think some crazy stuff, can we? We'll talk about it later, but my goodness, how many times I've heard people say, I was thinking, oh boy. Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover. That means heal the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. Our last two verses. And his servants came near 
and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean. Last verse. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. One more time, I just want to focus on verse number 13. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? So I want to preach to you what I feel the Lord's laid on my heart for this first Sunday for somebody in this house. I want to preach to you from this thought. Just do what he says. Just do what he says. I'm going to get a mama tone here today. What I mean by a mama tone is you know how your mama said just do it because I said so. You know that mama tone? Did you have mamas like that or just us in Mississippi had mamas like that? I'm going to have that tone with you today because God's going to do something in somebody's heart to this service before we leave. I felt it all service. Come on, put your hands together all over this building. Come on, one more time. Lift your voice all over this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name today, Lord. Bless your holy name. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Look at your neighbor and say, just do what he says. Our text is about a man named Naaman. And the book of Kings takes time to describe him a little bit and give us some information on this man's life. And anything that the scripture puts in there is worthy of note and attention. It says that Naaman was the captain of the host of Syria and that he was a great man and a mighty man but it also says he was an honorable man. The reason that we point this out is because we all can point to great people in this world but you don't just want to be a great person who got to great places because how you got there is very important honor is something that should be honored we're losing that as a society because if you had to cheat to win did you really win how you get there is important it matters what you do when nobody's looking. Character matters. Living honorably matters. Don't be great, but not honorable. Wherever you're going to go in life, make sure you stick to the principles of the Bible. He was great and honorable. This is why I believe that God pays him any attention at all. Because the scripture is very clear and lets us know the reason he's so successful was because God was with him. God was the one that was opening doors for him. It was God that put him where he was. Let us never forget that we didn't get where we are all by ourselves. Amen. Only a fool will wake up in the morning and think that he creates this day. 
this is the day that the Lord has made. God was blessing him and elevating him. And here is a man that's blessed of God, obviously successful, elevated to high positions of honor. And yet he still gets leprosy. I want to just pause and say that the best revelation a man or woman can ever receive is that it rains on the just and the unjust. You have to get that revelation. You have to understand that truth. If you do not understand that truth, the enemy will work on your mind and try to destroy your faith. If you don't understand that I can be blessed and highly favored and still go through trials, if you don't understand that, the devil will get all up in your psyche and in your mind and you will be inundated with questions. Why? Why would God let this happen? You'll be inundated with questions of, does God really care? Does God love me? Doesn't he see I've been doing everything I can do to please him? Why am I going through this? you got to reject those thoughts. you got to push them out of your mind. you got to rebuke the devil out of your spirit. You can't allow those thoughts to be in there. No, no, no. We go through stuff because it's a part of life. It's the process of being alive. Come on, talk to me right now. You got to understand. Just because you're living right does not exempt you from bad things happening. No, living right does this though. It preserves my faith and it gives me courage to walk through valleys and know I'm not alone when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. When I get that understanding, I can come to church with questions I don't have answers to and still lift my hands and still praise God. When I get this revelation, I can get cancer. I can lose my house, lose my job. I can lose my friends. I, I can lose family members and still have joy and still have peace. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. I rebuke at the devil that's trying to tell you you messed up somewhere and God doesn't care. I'm telling you, God put you where you are. He's brought you this far and he's not going to leave you. Come on, put your hands together and clap in this house. Woo, I just feel like dancing a little bit. I just feel like rejoicing a little bit. Devil, you lied to me. God does care. God is still in my corner. I may have some stuff going on, but God still good. Woo, look at somebody and say, God's still good. I may have pain in my body, but he's still good. I may have bills I haven't been able to pay yet, but he's still good. I may have some questions I don't have answers for, but God is still good. Yeah. Clap your hands one more time and give God praise. So he gets the news he's got leprosy. There was no Kaiser. There was no modern medicine like we know. If you got leprosy, that was it. It was done. And the shame that came with it was just as debilitating as the disease itself. Because you could no longer associate with people. You had to announce when you walked down the road, leper, unclean. That's why they built colonies that you'd have to relocate to. To join other people with leprosy. Because there would be no fear of the contagious disease that you had. So you would have to leave family and friends 
and be isolated. I'm building you this picture so you understand Naaman's plight. And you understand why the king didn't want to lose him. And why his king was so willing to help. And a little maid, the Bible says, who was captured. Think about this. She's a servant. She's a slave. And yet in that condition, she was still willing to help somebody else. Whatever you do, no matter what situation in you is, keep your heart right. Be willing to minister in any situation because you never know why God has allowed things to happen to you to bring you to the place that you're in. You thought it was captivity, but God said, I'm going to bring you to a place where you'll minister to people that you're not even realizing yet that they even need ministering to. Ooh, why do you think the Bible says all things work for good? For them that are called according to what? His purpose. It's what he's planned. It's what's in his will. She could have been bitter. She could have been like, absolutely not. I don't want to help this guy. Syria came in and did what they did. Took our country captive and now I'm a slave. No, she kept her heart right. And here she is, sick almost 5,000 years later, and I'm preaching about her on a Sunday. She says to his wife, I know a God that can heal him. Ooh, one of the best things you can tell somebody is I know a God. I don't know how it was that you came to church, but I guarantee you somebody told somebody. I know a God. Oh, can I get a witness in this house? Has anybody known that God that we're talking about, that God that heals, that God that can deliver, that God that can set free? Come on, I know a God that can put marriages back together. I know a God that can heal diseases. I know a God that can touch your mind and give you peace. Come on, in 2024, we ought to tell everybody that the Lord puts in our path. I know a God that can do it. Come on, put your hands together in this house and clap for the Lord. Ooh, I know a God. Don't it make you want to shout? Don't it make you want to clap? I know a God. I know a God that can do it. I know a God that can make the difference. She said, I know a God. If, if he could just go see this prophet, I'm telling you, he'll pray for him and he'll be healed. And word gets to Naaman. And he says, okay. I don't know how we're going to do this. Then the king steps up and the king says, we got to do something. I tell you what, Naaman, I'm going to load your wagons down. You take whatever it takes. He sent him a lot of money. I mean, this wasn't a five buck or a two dollar bill. This wasn't no happy meal. He loaded it down and sent him, sent letters over there to prepare and say, my man's coming. My right hand man is coming for that prophet to heal him. And he starts making this journey to see the man of God. And the whole ride on over there, he's fantasizing in his mind about what? What he thinks should happen. And he starts forming this expectation. That when a great man like me comes before the prophet. There's going to be fireworks shooting out. He's thinking, oh, a great man like me. 
coming before the prophet, I know he's going to come out and a voice is going to thunder. And he's going to smack his hand down. And James Brown's going to be dancing and singing in the background. And, and there's going to be choirs. And he's got this, see, you, you know what one of the greatest obstacles to our miracles is? Your preconceived idea about how you think God should do it. Oh, I'm on a medal here for a moment. This gets a lot of people in trouble because they think I've got an idea about how God should do it. And we've already sat down and fantasized it and worked it all the way out. And so we know how God should do it. And oh, we can get offended and sideways when God don't do it the way we thought he should do it. Come on, I need some more amens. I need some people to be real. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people get offended, want to backslide and leave God and walk away because God didn't do it the way you wanted him to do. Let me tell you like God told Job, where were you when I created the world? What were you doing when I was flinging the sun and the moon and the stars up in the sky? Where were you when I made grass leap out of the ground and trees grow? And when I took dirt and made man, where were you? What I'm preaching to you is this. Stop trying to manipulate God. You need to take your hands off, sister. You need to take your hands off, brother, and just say, I'm stepping back, and I'm going to let God do it the however he wants to do it. I'm going to let God handle it. Yeah, come on, you've been losing too much sleep because you're frustrated. God's going to set you free in this service, in this message, because you're going to put it in God's hands, and you're not going to try to control it, but you're going to say, here it is, God. Here it is. Do what you will. Woo! Somebody say, put it in God's hands. Stop trying to... Send subliminal messages up to heaven. Oh, yeah, you're guilty. You might as well go ahead and smile and nod. You're guilty. You'll be praying thoughts. Now, Lord, if you'll just do this. And, Lord, if you'll just fix it this way. Oh, I thank you for your will. No, you're not. No. No, you need to pray, not my will, but thy will be done. Whatever thy will is, that's what I want done. My will got me into a lot of mess. Oh, I'm going to preach to the ones in the back. Your will got you into a lot of messes. Let's be honest. What you thought, how you wanted it to be, create a lot of problems for you. Oh, it's relieving just to put it in God's hands and say, God, I'm just going to let you handle it however you want to do it. I'm just going to leave, be here. I'm just going to smile. I'm just going to praise. I'm just going to be faithful and let you work it out your way. I'm going to do it his way. But when Naaman got there, can you believe what this old preacher did? There was no James Brown singing. There were no fireworks. There was no multimedia presentation about this great man named Naaman. Nobody passed out a flyer. There wasn't a choir assembling. There wasn't a crowd with flags. You say, Pastor, you're really fabulating. Yeah, I'm just trying to build this up for you to get an idea. I don't know what he thought and you don't know either. But whatever he was thinking, it was not how it unfolded. The preacher did not even come outside. He sent one of the assistants. Now, that don't offend anybody in our church, and I'm thankful for that. But there are people that I've pastored in other places that if I didn't come, they were offended. They didn't want some of the ministers from the church to come pray for them. They wanted a pastor to come pray for them. Man, it did get a little tight in here, didn't it? Maybe I do need to kind of stay here for a moment and plow a little bit. <laughs> ha. 
He didn't like it. He said, does, does he know who I am? Why hasn't he come out here? Why did he? And the Bible doesn't tell us either why the prophet did it the way he did it. Let me just pause you and tell you another great revelation you need to receive is God gives commandments. Rarely does he give explanations. And if you're sitting around waiting on God to explain himself, you may be in for a long, bumpy ride. He just gives commandments. And the prophet sends him out there, the assistant, and says, tell him to go over to Israel, that place y'all are just taken captive. Go to the Jordan River. Oh, messy, dirty river. And I want you to dunk in it seven times and you'll be healed. And the Bible says Naaman got very angry. Now, when we become angry, we lose common sense. That's why those of you who can't control your anger say and do such silly things. Don't allow yourself to lose control of yourself. The Bible says a man or woman who can't control their anger is like a city with no walls around it. Meaning any enemy can sneak in and tear you apart. How many marriages have been destroyed because somebody can't control anger? How many people have ended up in prison because they couldn't control anger? How many people have backslid and gotten bitter because they couldn't control their anger? Yes, we need to be full of the Holy Ghost. And for all of you who ride around on an empty tank, you need to fill your tank all the way to the top and stay full of the Holy Ghost. Because when you're full of the Holy Ghost, you can't be full of anger and bitterness at the same time. Whenever you feel that anger coming up on you, you need to hit your knees somewhere. You need to say, God, I need help. I need you to fill me up. I don't want to be angry. As a matter of fact, i got to save myself from this angry generation. He becomes angry. Once you become angry, you lose your common sense. Say and do. I hate to use the word stupid, but I don't know how better to explain it. Do stupid things. How'd this happen? I got angry. He gets angry. And he says, aren't there some better rivers Right here where we are, that are clean, why should I go and dip in that nasty old river? And he leaves. He said, I'm going back home. He was going to miss out on a miracle because of pride. Pride is a powerful thing. Oh, I'm going to say it again. Pride is a powerful thing. And the proud do not like to be told they're full of pride. You want to make a proud person angrier? Tell them you got too much pride in your life and you need to humble yourself. Pride is a powerful thing. Pride makes people act ways they should have never acted. Live in ways they should have never lived. Don't miss out on your miracle because you got too much pride. Don't miss out on what God's trying to do in your life because you're held back and bound by pride. You ought to get up on your feet today and you ought to say, God, if there's any proudness, if there's any pride in my heart, forgive me of it. I want to be the man. I want to be the woman you have called me to be. It was pride. That's exactly what it was. It was pride. 
It was pride. He said, no, no, I'm not doing it. I'm going to do it my own way. I- I'm going home. Forget all this stuff. Forget all this. And thank God he had the right people around him. Why do you think the devil likes to isolate people so much? Because if he can get you all by yourself and get to messing with your thinking and get to stirring up your pot of pride that's in you, he'll get you to miss a miracle. But this guy had some people around him that said, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Thank God you got people in your life that'll stop you before you make stupid decisions. Thank God you got a church family. You got people that trust that you trust who can come to you and say, you know what, your attitude's wrong. You need to go pray through. Oh, let me meddle here a little bit. Thank God you got a pastor that will tell you there's some changes you need to make. Thank God there's people around you that'll say to you, don't miss your miracle. No, just do what he said. Come on, just do what he says. If he told you to do a great thing, wouldn't you have done it? Why do you matter? What do you have to lose? Just do what he said. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise in this house. Yeah, come on. I've come to encourage somebody today. I've come to tell you, just do what he says. Just do what he says. If he said to do it, just do it. Do what he says. I'm trying to help somebody to stop wrestling with God. Stop fighting his will. You can't fight with God. Your arms aren't long enough to box with God. That's what he told Paul. He said, isn't it hard to kick against the pricks? In other words, he said, Paul, it's hard to fight me. That's why the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. What's a transgressor? Somebody ain't doing what God said. That's what a transgressor is. He said, that's the way it's hard. See, if anybody ever tells you living for God is hard, you need to be one of these people that say living for God's not hard. What you've been doing is hard. When you try to live your own way and say, God bless what I'm doing, that's hard. But if you'll submit to him, if you'll do what he says, living for God's easy. The way of a transgressor is hard, but living for God is easy. Just do what he says, Naaman. Get all this preconceived ideas out of your mind. Put all this pride behind you. Why do you care if James Brown is singing or not? As long as you don't leave here with leprosy. Why do you care if they shot fireworks or not? As long as you don't leave here with leprosy. Why do you care if they didn't strike up the band and make banners and make a big deal? Who cares, Naaman? You have an opportunity to be healed. Just do what he said. Woo! Come on, I've had people come in the house of God and I tell them, you need to repent of your sins and get baptized in Jesus' name. And they start fighting that. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Stop fighting it. Just do what the Word says. I've told people, you need to come to church and get the Holy Ghost. And you need to pray until you speak in tongues. Don't fight it. Just do what the Word says. Somebody say, just do what he says. Mary tells them at the wedding party, they've run out of wine. No wine left. She goes and gets Jesus. She brings him back there. And you know what she tells him? Whatever he says, you do it. Yeah, but Mary, he's asking for The water pots that we have been washing people's feet with. I don't care. Do what he says. Yeah, but you didn't see the feet that went. I don't care. Do what he says. 
Come on, I feel like Mary up here preaching to somebody. Stop making all the excuses of why you're being disobedient and just do what he says. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to make sense of it. He can take dirty water and turn it into the best wine that you ever tasted. If you don't do what he says, we're going to have a bad party. But if you yield to him and do what he says, he'll lift this place up. Come on, there were some frustrated people who were really scared. They'd run out of wine. They were embarrassed. But when they did what he said, the miracle took place. Somebody say, just do what he says. Prophet tells the widow, I know you only have a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. I know you just said that you're going to eat this little pancake and you're going to die. I know it's a famine going on, but will you make me a cake first? And if you do it, God's going to take care of you. Yeah, but preacher, you don't understand our situation. Just do what he says, sis. Preacher, you don't understand what's going on in my life. You don't have all the details. Just do what he says. Don't try to figure it out. How am I going to get more if I give? Don't try to figure it out. Just do what he says. And she made him that cake first. And when she fed him, she went back to that flower pot. And it never ran out of flour. And that cruise of oil never ran out of oil. If you'll do what he says, God will take care of you in your worst times. He'll take care of you in your famine. He'll blow your mind. But you got to do what he says. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord all over this building. Come on, lift your voice in this house. Come on, I'm tired of arguing. I'm tired of fighting. I'm just going to do what he said. It don't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. It's beyond my comprehension. Have you ever tried to sit down and figure out God and just said, it don't make any sense? Anybody going to be real today and agree with that? You've had situations where you go, God, what are you doing? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, you want to make wine out of the where we've been washing feet. That don't make sense. You're telling me I'm going to get a whole lot of flour and a whole lot of oil if I use what I have left and give it to you? It don't make any sense. Somebody's in this house today, and that's where you are right now. You came in saying, it doesn't make any sense. I, I, don't, I don't understand. God sometimes is not going to make sense. He's just not going to make sense. And you don't have to have an explanation. You just need to have obedience and do what he said. Because there's some times where it makes no sense. I mean, here's the king telling his army, God told me for us to go into battle, and we're not going to put our strongest men on the front line. No, I want to get the praise team out there. That don't make any kind of sense. He said, get the praisers, get the singers. They're going to lead us into battle. And here they go marching toward an enemy that outnumbers them, that they've been so afraid of. God will ask you to do things that make no sense. And you can either argue with him and miss out on the miracle, or you can just say, we're going to do what it says. Just come out there and praise him. It don't make any sense, preacher, for you to tell me to clap my hands and shout and lift my voice when I'm going through what I'm going through. I'm telling you the Bible is telling us clearly if you go into your battle with worship, with praise not with your best sword not with your best weapon but you're going with your hands raised and your mouth open I feel like dancing up here a little bit come on there's some battles that only praise we'll get you through just do what he said Come on, get up on your feet, lift your hands in this house. Woo! Somebody needs to walk into their job tomorrow with your hands raised. Come on, somebody needs to go to your house today with your hands raised. Praising, I'm going in. I'm just going to do what he said. Come 
Come on, take about 15 seconds and praise him all over this house. I'm putting my pride aside. I'm putting my preconceived ideas aside. I'm not going to try to figure it out. No, I'm just going to do what he said. Even when I don't understand you, I still trust you. Even when I can't see it, when I've tried hard as I can to see it, and I feel like I'm in the dark, I'm going to trust you and do what you've commanded. Stand all over this building. I close with this. Remember the blind man that needed a healing? He comes to Jesus. He can't see. He's in the dark. He says, Lord, please heal me. And God does not simply speak and say, be healed. He doesn't do this grand thing. He doesn't call fire out of heaven. No angels flutter down and you can feel their wings touching your face. No chill bumps. No lightning or thunder. Jesus gets dirt. Spits in it. Makes a mud ball. Puts it over his eyes. That's not the way you thought God should do it. Come on now, talk to me. Couldn't you think of a hundred other ways for him to do it? Than to rub dirt in my eyes. And the man can't see. It would almost seem like he didn't care, right? Blind man now has dirt in his eye. Let me bring that to us. How about when you're in a dark situation, you can't see what to do. It seems like there's added insult to your injury. Here you're thinking, God, what what, what else? What is this? If you're going to get your miracle, you got to be able to dance with dirt in your eye. You got to be able to still do what he says. Even though this don't make sense. Even though I'm wiping it. What you don't understand is with every wipe, he could see a little bit better. Every time when he got to that water and he began to wipe, he could see a little bit. Oh, here it is. He didn't understand that Jesus just went back to creation when he got a little handful of dirt and made Adam out of it. He just went back to the beginning and got a little bit of speck of dirt and made some eyes. He was just doing what he always did. He didn't explain himself to him. And who is in this building today? It's gritty. Can't see what God's doing. What what is this? I just asked him. I wanted to see it. Oh, I can't. What's he doing? What's he doing? Dirt on his eyes and said, Go wash. Don't sit here and ask for an explanation. Just do what he said. You may have to have somebody help walk you, but get to that pool, brother. Because as soon as you start wiping that out, you're going to see, you're going to have a miracle. He could have left. He could have said, this is crazy. I came here. Look how humiliating it is. I asked for help. And he's spitting and, Lord, rubbing dirt on me. No, he kept his heart right. He just did what he was told to do. I'm done preaching. I preached my heart out to somebody in this house. Bow your heads right now. Pray all over this house. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what dirt's in your eyes. I don't know what dilemmas you have. 
I don't know what situations you're facing. I don't know what's in front of you that you can't see around. I don't know what kind of problems, what kind of mountains you're climbing, what kind of valleys you're walking through. I don't know, but I am here to tell you emphatically without any hesitation, don't miss a miracle because you got an idea of how you think God's going to do it. No, commit in this service here today. God, however you want to work it out, I'm going to give you thanks. However you want to fix it, I'm going to give you praise. However you want to do it, I put it in your hand today. Come on, help me pray all over this house. I struggled with it last year, but 2024, no, I'm putting it in your hands. I'm just going to do what you say. You don't have to explain it to me. You don't have to make it make sense. It may be beyond my comprehension. That's fine. I still trust you. I know you're in control. I know you're in charge. I know you have a plan. I know your will is perfect. I surrender. I want to know you more. Come on, won't you step out? Won't you come with your hands raised? You may have to walk down here with some dirt in your eye, but do what he said. You may have to come forward with some unanswered questions, but just do what he said. messages from me no my prayer is let thy will be done let thy kingdom come my prayer is God you are in control I'm just gonna go into the battle with my hands raised I'm just gonna go into the battle with my mouth open filled with prayer I'm laying my pride aside Foolish pride aside. I don't have all the answers, but I know you do. I can't fix it, but I know a God that can. I can't make sense.